It's not what I wanted to see in that screen. That's a lot of material. That's like whole parts from something. Hey, and welcome back to Ambition Strikes. So last summer, you guys watched us cut in this road behind me. And that was a huge project that allowed us to finally unlock the last big step to finishing our shop, which was pouring concrete. This is the Caterpillar D8 that we bought last summer. It's a 1965 D8H46A model. And this was the key to our success at building that road. I got to know this machine pretty well last summer. And there are a few things that I'd like to get fixed so that they don't give us more trouble this summer. So let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to be working on the pin bushings in this blade. There is a huge gap between the pin and the hole that the pin rides in. That gap's not supposed to be there at all. So what ends up happening is that because there's so much slop in those pin bushings, the blade is able to walk side to side independently of the bulldozer until the track actually contacts the push arms and like actually kind of blocks the track. It's a problem. It's the same situation on both sides. Now, I think that in theory, I could buy this entire piece and cut it off here and weld the new one on, but I think I have an easier solution. I bought a piece of chromoly tubing that's got the right inside diameter, and I'm just gonna to attempt to sleeve the inside of those existing holes. I chose chromoly tubing because unlike before, I think that the new bushing sleeve will be harder than the pin and make the pin wear because it's way easier to replace the pin than it is to replace the bushing. Let's see if it works. This machine throws off all of my guesses for how big something is. I looked at that and went, yeah, that's a half inch bolt. It's a three quarter socket. Not even close. Okay, try again. The nut has been welded to the bolt. This is a grinder job. So now that the retainer's off the pin, it's time to get the pin out. Oh, and if you're wondering about this, we have some friends visiting. It looks like if I were to pull the dozer forward about a half an inch, it would come right out. Pulling the dozer forward half an inch is easier said than done. That came out really easily. All right, let's see what the damage is. But we do have a problem, which is that the tubing I bought is exactly two and a half inches inside diameter. But the pin out here on the end is about 35 thousandths of an inch too big, but down here it's two and a half. And over here it's two and a quarter. And over here, it's two. So that means that it will not go in the tubing. And I could probably upsize to some kind of pipe that had a little bit bigger of an inside diameter, but then it wouldn't be hardened. This chromoly tubing has a much harder, much tougher steel. So I think the best bet for me at this point is going to be 
to grind down the pin a little bit until it slides smoothly into the chromoly tubing. Success. All right, now we got things going. While I'm working on the dozer, Courtney and Oliver are out here smoothing and spreading the gravel that we laid down this morning. This thing is going to be a game changer. Vibratory roller compactor for the skid steer. We've all gotten really used to this lit up tree in the front yard and we really like it, but I think it's time to acknowledge that Christmas is over. So we're gonna pull these lights down and I think we have something way better that we're gonna install for year round up here. Oh! Uh oh. It's like Christmas carnage down there. I'd like to give a huge thanks to our sponsor of today's video, Gobi. They sent us a bunch of lights and I think this outdoor space is about to get a serious makeover. Step one is to hang these Lynx Dream string lights right here along the bottom side of the solar panels to light up our dining area. While I get the string lights wrapped up, Tyler's working on installing some floodlights onto the outside of the deck that are gonna shine up and uplight this cool cedar tree. Courtney's gonna be installing the RGBIC permanent outdoor lights underneath the edge of this railing so that they shine it down on the railing and light it up at night. One of the coolest features about all of these Go V lights is that they're actually smart controlled. So I just downloaded the app. We've got these rope lights plugged in. Let's see if I can get them set up. And we'll check back in with you this evening when we can actually put these lights to the test once it's dark. It's time to turn the lights on. What color do you want the lights to be? Pink. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Whoa. Govee's products provide a fully personalized lighting experience. With RGB dynamic lighting and 76 scene modes, there's guaranteed to be a little something for everyone. The VHB tape allows them to be mounted on a variety of surfaces and makes them so quick to install. Their products are waterproof, extreme temperature resistant, and provide a 50,000 hour lifespan. So if you're ready to update your outdoor lighting experience, head to the link below. And thanks again to Govi for sponsoring this video and adding some party mode to this deck. Good early morning. I think it's around 5 a.m. Oliver woke us up at around four. I was laying in bed. I could not go back to sleep. I started thinking about this dozer project and I realized that I was making a mistake. Let me show you. So my plan to weld a piece of this tubing into this arm right here as a bushing was going to mean that this arm could no longer rotate like this independently of the blade. The more I looked at this arm, the more I realized it's supposed to have some kind of spherical ball in there that would that would allow it to rotate about this pin here. If those push arms couldn't rotate, they would also have to tip like that with the blade as it goes up and down, which would mean that this pivot here on the dozer would have to be capable of tilting just as far as well. And I look at this pivot and I don't think it can rotate that far. You can see here that this is already rotated about as far as it can go, but the blade rotates a lot further than that. So my plan to weld that tubing in as a bushing is not gonna work. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert that tubing in there as sort of a space taker upper to, to remove some of the slop, but not remove all of the slop. So thank you, Oliver, for waking me up at 4 a.m. last night so that I could lay in bed and figure this out. <laughs> Thank you. 
So you can see it's still gonna be able to rotate quite a bit in here. Way less slop than the pin was allowing. It's not a perfect repair, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot better than it was. And the reality of this dozer is just that we're not gonna put that many hours on it, and so getting it repaired so that it works well enough for our needs is sort of more important than repairing it perfectly. Because if we were gonna repair this thing perfectly, it would need a lot of work. Well, while I wait for Oliver to wake up, I'll tackle a few other odds and ends, including some bolts that were mysteriously missing. It's giving this thing a once over and I just noticed that for some reason, two of the three bolts on this were just missing. Judging by the amount of weld splatter and other stuff I drilled out of that hole, I don't think there's been a bolt in that hole since whoever made this repair. This is a lift cylinder that lifts the blade and now this rod ends a lot less likely to fall out, so I think that's a good thing. There's one more glaring issue, which is this punch that's sitting here. I shoved this punch in this hole last summer to keep this pin in and uh, it's just been living there ever since. I'm gonna replace that with a better retainer. Scratch that, I'm leaving the punch. Uh, I just noticed that the ears are kind of spread on this and uh, the punch is bent. So there's no way that I'm getting a bolt through there that's any bigger than this punch. The punch has been working, so I'm leaving the punch. I just heard his screams, which means that Oliver is awake and I can get back to grinding on these pins. Times like this, I wish I had a proper lathe. And now it's time to see if this crazy idea is gonna work. I thought I was gonna have to fight that, but that went in easy. Good morning from me and Mr. Grumpy Baby. Oh my He's pretty happy now. These days, early mornings look a little different. We both went straight to work this morning, me on baby duty and Riley on the bulldozer. Thanks for watching the baby so I could get to this. And sorry about the grinder noise. I've had enough of playing with chains and binders trying to move this thing. The blade, I think, weighs like 10,000 pounds. It's just too heavy for me to move. So enough messing around, firing up the machine. That was way better than how it used to be. There used to be so much delay when I would go to tilt it because of how much slop there was and all of that, that it would take forever. It's a lot more responsive now. When I, I can tell when I'm pushing with the blade a little bit that there's doesn't slop back and forth. So much better now. Well, everyone, let me introduce you to the Reese family. The Reese's are our good friends from college and they're gonna be living here on the property this summer, helping out with projects. They're living in their self-converted shuttle bus that is two-wheel drive, and we're gonna try to get it up the hill to the very first campsite that Courtney and I lived in on this property. We tried yesterday unsuccessfully. For the record, I told them this was a bad idea. So we're gonna give it another shot today, towing it with the skid steer. Uh, we're left unsupervised right now, and I could see this ending badly.
Radio check. Copy. Let's do this. Success! I don't know. That actually went a lot smoother than expected. I'm a little disappointed. We made it to the top and now we have the good views. Yeah, they do get better views than us. Are you the new dozer operator, Boone? Now that I've got those bushings and the push arms fixed, I'm headed to the dealer to go pick up some more parts. I am like a kid in the candy shop. I'm getting a run through today on how to run this Cat 330 with this giant rock hammer. Quinn and I are gonna have this machine for the next couple of weeks and I wanted to make sure that I was well oriented on how everything works so that we could hit the ground running when it shows up at the properties. So big thanks to Western Cat for having us out today to take a look at this machine. All right, I got the parts and it's back to the property. It just amazes me that I can call about a 60 year old dozer and they have parts and filters in stock. Now with the blade a little bit tighter, it's time to move on to some maintenance projects on this dozer. Last summer, I removed the torque converter in this thing and I found a lot of debris in the hydraulic system in the process. If you haven't seen those videos, there's a link in the description below and I recommend you check them out. With all that debris I found in the hydraulic system, I think it'd be wise to change the hydraulic filters again. And hopefully we won't have more hydraulic issues this summer. Pretty dirty. I'm tempted to change the oil too, but it's 200 bucks for every five gallons and it's like 80 something gallons in total. Filter's done, let's check the screens. I tell you what though, it is way easier to be doing this stuff right here in front of the shop now and all set up than up on the road like I was last summer. Looks pretty bad. So just a quick backstory for those of you that are new to the channel. Courtney and I bought this dozer last summer. Not only was it the biggest dozer that we could find for sale. It was also the cheapest, but there's a reason for that. Let's just say it's been a little neglected. So the guy that we bought this from right before we bought it, he put a used transmission in it because the transmission that was in it had blown up. I guess I kind of assumed that in that process they had flushed the hydraulics, but I don't think they did. And so we keep finding metal, like kind of big metal. That's a big piece. And look at this thing. That's a really big piece. We keep finding that kind of stuff in this magnetic filter and I don't know if it's from the existing transmission. I suspect it's from the transmission that blew up and it's still just working its way through the system. I guess I just don't really know where you go from here. You know, it works right now. It's been working for us. It pushes dirt. Do you spend a lot of money and rebuild the whole thing? I don't think so. So we're just going to keep, keep trying to keep the filters clean, keep filtering this stuff out, keep an eye on it. If we keep getting metal after lots of cleanings, I think it'll be time to uh, dive in further. All right, next up is the air filter. Admittedly, I've never actually opened this up. I don't even know that there's a filter in here. So I think before we start running it in another dirty, dusty environment all summer, we should definitely take a peek. Just kind of assume that we undo these. Come on. Okay, there we go. I don't know, this looks strange and filthy. 
Oh yeah, yeah. It's clean on the inside. That's good. So I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up and pop it back in and get a new one on order in the meantime. All right, air filter, check. And now I think it'd be a good idea to pull up the floor pans and check all the bolts to the U-joint and the transmission and all the stuff that I pulled out last year when I did the torque converter and make sure there's no ticking time bombs in there. This is the U-joint assembly that came apart on me last summer and caused all the problems. So this is what I mostly wanna check and I'm gonna go ahead and grease it while I'm at it. Start it up. All right, guys, well, thanks for hanging out with me while I did some maintenance on the dozer. That's all I'm gonna be able to get to for today because we have a huge, exciting piece of equipment coming tomorrow, and tomorrow marks the day that we start on the road. If you liked watching this video, make sure you subscribe because there's a lot more bulldozer content coming your way. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.